The series begins by introducing us to Oyoile once again, the land Saro and Arola kept both a loop from. Today is a normal day. The market men and women were busy buying and selling when suddenly a thick black mist appears in the sky. Everybody scatter. It was their calabed scattering everywhere. The whole market emptied within minutes. Then we see Fashogbon, the wise man, wake up in his room, worried and disturbed. He says, Oh, mythical like a bed. What's the matter? Please calm down. At this point, I am sure you know why the Akala bed is doing this. If you don't know, kindly first go back and watch the part one of Anikola on Netflix, or you can just watch the recap by clicking this tag. Then you can come back to watch this recap. Now we see Dead Saro wake up in a thick forest, the great beyond. Remember, he died in part one, right? Now, this is his spirit in the great beyond. So he gets up, looks around and starts walking with his clothes torn. He enters the road. First, there was no one but him. Then he looked again and suddenly he saw a long queue of people walking. Ah, ah, what's going on? Both young and old, he quickly joined them. In fact, he tried to jump the queue. He asked a man ahead of him, hey, please, where are we going now? The man says, what kind of question is that? Are we not heading to the same place? Saru says, um, but please, where are we heading to? The man then reply him saying, we are on the gateway to heaven. Gateway to heaven? Saru then recalls that earlier when he was killed, the Akala bed resurrected him. So how come he's on the road to the gateway to heaven? Then we are shown what actually happened at the end of the first movie. Remember, Saru woke up, right? Actually, the Akala bed sees him and recognizes him, so the bed sends him back to his death. Now getting to the gate, he meets the gatekeeper. The angry gatekeeper says, ah, you, go back. You have no access to this place. Saru says, why? But others are going through. The gatekeeper says, no, you are a debtor. Aren't you Saru the Asha of Iweaver? It was you who collected Akala's power. You can't go through this place until you pay your debt. Debt? What debt? I don't owe any debt. Even if I do, how can I pay? The spirit says, you resurrected 20 people while you were on earth. Now you have to return and kill all 20 of them and bring them back here. Or else, you will become a lost soul like those ones you saw while coming. Saru starts begging. He says, he can't kill. He's not a killer. Please help me out. The spirit says, no, there's no help. You have to do as I say. The spirit then gives him the key to use in taking those people's life. Now, go. Hey, voila for Saru. So, better the day is not always that easy, eh? Now, Saru resurrects back to Earth. This time, not as a human. No, as a spirit. Now, as he wakes up, he hears crowds calling loudly. Guess what? The birds were eating his rotting corpse. Definitely, this is the end of the road for Saru. All he needs is just to find his way into heaven. As for living again on earth, I think that chapter is closed. Quick disclaimer, this recap is for educational purposes only. Anikola Kwe is directed by the great Kunle Afolayan and this recap is not meant to replace that movie, neither should it stop you from watching the full movie on Netflix. Also, this recap contains heavy spoilers. If you are just joining us, please definitely subscribe and turn on the notification icon. Hi, this is Sam. Welcome to the Film Village. Saru then sees some women in the farm. He wants to help one of them but then the reality dawns on him that he can no longer be seen. Now we see Queen Arolake still on her way after escaping from the village where Saru was killed. Now Saru returns to Iluojumo where he was killed. The village where his better the day refuses to better the day. He enters, wondering and confused. He remembers what the spirit told him that if he doesn't pay up his debt, he will become a lost soul. So why thinking, he saw one of those he resurrected, he, a woman with a child. Hmm, do you know the pain her family is going to go through again? Hey, hey. Well, she enters the house with everybody welcoming her 
her come oh, her car bow. Then Saru enters to meet her. The woman says she is tired. She would like to go inside to rest. Ha! Saru finds it very difficult to do this, but he has to. He has to, right? Now he enters the hut after her, and the next thing we hear is loud noise of people crying. The woman is dead. Even Saru is deeply troubled by this. He goes to meet the next person, a drum maker. He killed that one and then goes to the next person, Lai Wasabi. I'm sorry, I mean Akani in this movie. A newly married man is about to go in to meet his wife for a hardcore session when Saru follows him in. It turns out that while Akane was coming, he actually was going, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Now, Saru goes to the next person. That old woman he resurrected in part 1 that was complaining asking Saru who asked him to resurrect her. Now, this woman is blind. She is having a dinner when Saru gets there. The blind woman, through intuition, sees Saru. She calls him the messenger of death. <laughs> Even if I am blind, I can see you with my inner eyes. Ah, how come? Saru says, even those with two good eyes can't see me. How can you, a blind person, see me? She says, she can see him clearly. Okay, oh. it's time for Saru to kill her. The woman says, I remember you resurrected me back then, eh? But now, I'm not ready to die. And I have a deal for you. If you spare my life, I will make a way out for you. A way out? Saru says, that's a lie. It's impossible. No way out. The woman says, there is a way out. You of all people should know there is a way out. Ah, ah. Saru says, Mama, are you messing with me? Mess with you? Why? Okay, listen. Haven't you heard of rates? Saru says, he has heard about that, but he doesn't believe rates exist. The woman says, hmm, you better start believing in them. The woman says she can help him to become a wraith instead if he promised to spare her life. Now wait, let's take a minute to explain what wraiths are. Have you seen or heard stories of some people who lived in a place, get married and some even have children, while those they were living with does not know that they are actually dead. But anytime someone that knows them in their former life sees them, they will disappear. If you have heard about that, yes. That is what they call rates. In Yoruba, they call them Akudaya. That is what the woman says she's going to help Saru to become, so Saru can continue to live. Now she asks him, didn't they give you something? Saru says yes, they gave me a key. Take. She says no, 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 keep it. You must never lose it. It must be with you at all times. So, go to where you were buried. And Saru says, ah, I wasn't buried though. My corpse was left on the mountain and the birds have devoured it. The woman asked him to go there. Take the leftover, whatever you can find, bury it. Then take the soil from where you buried it and travel to another land. Pour the soil there, cross over it and you keep living as a rate. That's all. And Saro did exactly that. Now the wise one, Fashogbon of Oyoile, approaches the king to inform him about the Akala bed complaints and what they need to do. He tells the king that all the chaos befalling this town is because of the Akala bed. The bed is angry. The king says, you mean Akala bed is responsible for all this chaos? He says, yes. Hmm. Okay, is there a way out or not? Fashogbon says, there is no way out oh, unless Queen Arolake returns to this village and a sacrifice is made out and then everything will be fine. The king says, we have searched everywhere for Arolake and we can't find her. What else do you want me to do? Okay, Kuku kill me. Baba says, ah, no, I can't kill you, my king. Ah, okay then, bring my messenger Adigun. Gather all the chiefs here. I need you to hear something. Now let's go back to Saro. Now we see a young boy comes to call Saro while he was sleeping. He says, are you the laborer that wants to work on the farm? Eh, eh, can you see me? The boy says, yes. Ah, you see me? He says, yes quickly grabs the boy. Oh boy, Saru is excited. I'm back. I'm back to the land of the living. So, he enters a new village called Iluaje. He looks around. He's happy, excited and he's hungry. Then he sees a woman frying Nakara. Now, remember those three people he killed first? Their spirits were following him about too. Hmm. Now, the chiefs has gathered before the king. 
He calls the man he sent to search for Arulake to come and tell the chief what he saw. The man narrates that, hey, while in the forest looking for Queen Arulake, he saw someone. He thought it was a spirit until he moved closer and, oh, it was the queen. He found Queen Arulake. Quickly, he grabbed her and while they were returning to the village, a heavy rain started to fall. The rain was so heavy that the river got flooded and while they were trying to cross the river, the queen and her luggage fell into the river. He tried to grab her but he couldn't. He only got hold of her bead. I showed the king and the king confirms that it belonged to the queen. That is the whole truth of the matter. The king then says, you see, you see, Fashogbon, you've heard the report yourself. Ah, Fashogbon says, alright then, I'm leaving, we shall see some other time. Ah, 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 ah. The chiefs were surprised that. Why did Fashogbon just leave like that without saying anything? Hey, you see the problem I have with him, the king says, there is nothing I do that is right in his eyes. Him and Basharun, the chief says, don't worry yourself, your highness, you will overcome their hatred. Now, Saru finds a small abandoned hut to stay. As he was entering, he feels the presence of those three spirits. Then he turns back. Ah, who are you? What do you want from me? They say, we are your dependents. We have to stay with you because it is only you who can take us across. Who, who, who? Remember what the spirit told Saru at the Heaven's Gate earlier? He says, Saru should go and kill them and bring them back. So, Saru has to bring them back. That's why they are waiting for Saru now. Hey, Saru, Wa'ala. Saru says, you can go by yourself now. No, never. It is you. See, we even brought you food and drink and clothes. Enjoy and rest a bit so we can start our journey. Saru begs them to please allow him to live and enjoy life for a little while before he finish up and join them so they can all live together. Hmm. So they thought about it and then agreed to give Saru three years to live among the living. And after three years has elapsed, they shall live together. Now take, go and eat your food. Then Saru begins to eat. The next day, Saru starts to look for work to do. Hey, what do you want? I, I need a job. See, I have strength. I can work. Let me show you. He carries a sack and he falls. <laughs> then another co-worker, Kekere, comes to help him. The Kekere tells the boss that he's going to guide him and help Saru to walk. The man then says, no problem, he's free to walk. Saru walked and was paid. The boss even asks him to come to work the next day and anytime he wants to work. So Saru and his co-worker Kekere became friends. Now the next morning, Saru wakes up, tired. Now while washing his face so he can go for work, he sees four large jars filled with palm wine. Ha! How? From where? The three ghosts say, that is what you will be selling henceforth. Oh boy, see Cruz. Oga was expecting Saro the following day, but Saro did not show. Instead, Saro has dressed up his hut, turned it into a bar for people to come and drink palm wine. Now Kekere comes looking for him. Ah, Saro, why didn't you come to work today? What are you doing here? Saro asks him to sit, sit, sit. He serves him palm wine and they begin to gist. Oh boy. This palm wine makes sense. Hey, where did you tap it from? Ah, uh -uh. Saru says, this is from the gods themselves. Ta, see, tell me. Saru says, if I told you, you won't believe me. Kekere says, tell me now. Saru says, okay. I woke up and I found palm wine behind my house. That's impossible. Before we know it, people have started gathering, one after the other. Saru serves them. Oh my god, this palm wine tastes amazing. Ah, ah. So the other palm wine seller was only selling water for us. This is the real palm wine. Now more people start to enter. Saru has turned to the new palm wine seller. Now, Karen Wi, a palm wine seller, arrives with his own palmy. Nobody is even looking at him, you know. They have a new dealer now. Saru, the palm wine seller. Now Baba starts asking around. Even Baba's tight friend has betrayed him to patronize Saru. The three girls are always standing along anywhere Saru is. Alright, now Saru sees a beautiful damsel. We know Saru always likes good things. Latorera, the beautiful maiden. She's the daughter of Karen Wee, the former palm wine seller. Saru runs to meet her. Hey, sorry, excuse me. It seems this fell from you. She says, no, it's not my own. She knows Saru is only looking for a way to talk to her. See, 
Can't you see that it's bigger than my wrist? So it's not mine. And next time, use another format. <laughs> Saro then tells her what he wants. She says, listen, first of all, in this town, it is not right for men to run after women like a dog. Also, my father will not be happy seeing me with his rival. Saru says, don't worry, even your father will love me after tasting my palm wine. She says, that can never happen. And suddenly, we see her father walking. He starts complaining. And after he has suffered to get palm wine for them, is this fair? Is this what how they should pay him back? The men there start mocking him. And Olato Rera's daughter had to drag the father out of the bar. Baba sits for hours outside his own shop, looking for customers. He literally begs people to patronize him, but no one did. While Saru's heart has turned to something else. Saru and Latorera now meet in their meeting place. He starts frolicking with her. She says, no, nah, people may see us. Saru says, stop it, without wasting time. Ah, we know Saru now. We know Saru and his promiscuity. He pulls her down and has sex with her. Now, Latorera arrives home that night after the pounding from Saru to meet her father, drunk, complaining about Saru, and now that his own daughter is now coming home late again, I feel for this man. He lost his customers and business just like that. Now he is about to lose his daughter. Baba says, he knows what he will do, he knows what to do to fix things, and he needs the daughter's help to carry it out. Hmm. Baba has a plan for Saru. That night, Olato Era goes to meet Saru at his house. The three ghosts saw her coming and they know what she's coming for. So Lato Era enters and as usual, Saru starts pulling her to come over now. Nah. He wants to show her he's a real man. She was like, no Jare, see, come here. Yes, another round. Hey, Saru, this year, no grief for anybody. Now she sleeps over. The following morning, as Saru goes to fetch his palm wine from the jazz, Lato Era sees it. She has found his secret storage. Ah, she says, please don't be offended though, if I may ask. You don't tap your palm wine, right? It seems you fetch yours behind your house. Mm, Saru just walk away from her, ignoring her totally. Ah, ah. Are we fighting? Saru says, La Torera. I know your father sent you to watch me. I know. Ah, ah. Me? No, no. Okay then. Saru says, why is your father throwing yam at goats just like that without looking back? Don't you know that goats will always eat any piece of yam thrown at it? You see the gist? Saru is calling the girl yam and that her dad planted her to entice Saru so as to find out his secret. Then she gets angry that Saru could compare her to a yam. Saru quickly pulls her aside. He says, see eh, he truly loves her. And he wants their love to be natural, mutual, and not deceitful. So she has to pick between him and her father. Ha. Ah. It was initially shocking, but Olato Era chooses to stay with Saru. Alright. She even leaves home. She had a fight with her father to go and live with Saru. The father begs her to stay, but no. Olato Era is in love. Hey, Baba lost his business to Saru. Now he has lost his child to Saru. Oh my. Sorry, sir. Well, let's move on. That night, the three ghosts discusses with Saru on him taking in a new wife. You only have three years to live, Saru. Does it make sense to you marrying another wife? Saru says, Haba, she's not my wife. Oh. She's only living with me. The third ghost says, Don't deceive yourself. Uh, don't you love her? Saru says, No, I don't love her. Oh. Uh, in fact, don't stress yourself. Three years will elapse soon and we will all live together. Then they threatened him of dire consequences if he should break his promise and refuse to follow them back or take them back after the completion of three years. Now while they were outside gisting, Palato Rera was inside waiting for Saru. Then the ghost disappears. Then Saru sits outside and begins to think, ha, ah, three years. Now two years has already passed. He has just one year left to live. What is he going to do now? And he is already enjoying his life. Hey, he says, I don't want to die again. What can I do? Then episode 1 ends. So, what will Saru do to escape the third year? Stay tuned as we continue with episode 2. But for now, I want you to rest and drink some water. Thanks for watching. 
please, if you enjoyed this recap, don't forget to like and subscribe. Now, let me go and check if that Saru Spam wine really tastes that good. Wait for me, I'll be back. Until then, I am Sam and this is the Film Village. Remember episode 1 ended with Saro confused and thinking about what he can do to escape the impending death. Now the 3 years given to him has elapsed. So what will Saro do? Alright, let's go back to Fashogun first. When Fashogun left the palace, he actually went to meet Bashorun, the person the king says they both hate. Why were you not at the palace today? Hope there is no problem. Bashorun says, no problem, please have a seat. I'm almost done. So, what are these men cooking? What is going on between them? Now at the palace, the chiefs are also confused. They are wondering why Bashoru no longer comes to the palace to meet the king. One chief says, it's because since Bashoru left their village to build a military post in another land, Ede, the people of that land has warned him to never try such a thing again and they chased him out of their land and it is because of the shame he can no longer set his feet into that palace. One of the chiefs then says, but they should warn Bashorun very well. Why will he go and build another military outpost on another people's land? Bashorun is only looking for their trouble. They should avoid anything that will bring fights between Oyoile and the people of Ede. Now, Fashogbo and Bashorun are also discussing about the king that he no longer listens to them or take their advice. Instead, he prefers the sweet words of those idiotic chiefs instead. Fashogbon says, by the way, the king's daughter, Princess Omowumi, do you remember Omowumi? Eh, uh -huh, this Omowumi, she is engaged to be married to Bashorun's son. This reason alone, he is supposed to make the king yearn to long to always want to see you and have you around him. Bashorun says, sis, Baba, you are missing something. How long ago did we pick a wedding date? Is it not the king that keeps postponing it? That means he doesn't want us to be in-laws. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Fashogbon says, maybe the king is scared though. Maybe the king feels that if his daughter should have a male child for your son, that means your family may end up ruling this land. And the king doesn't want the royal blood to leave his own house. Fashogbon says, well, that could be the reason. Then another chief, Iyalode says, she does not think Bashorun not coming to the palace is because of shame. She thinks Bashorun is angry. And Bashorun is angry because when Bashorun suggested that they should form an army to protect their land, all of you were against him. And that is why Bashorun is angry. Another chief says, eh, 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 they can't form a military outpost now because there's no money in the treasury. Then we go back to Bashorun telling Fashogun that the king also says, the reason why he was delaying the marriage is because there is no money to fund it. So, Oyoile has no money. They have no money for the king's marriage. They have no money to protect their land. So what are they going to do? Bashorun then says, he will not just stand and watch how a bastard ruler of another land, Ede, will disrespect his own land, Oyoile, and the king is doing nothing about it. No, he cannot stand it. That was why he went to war with them. Unfortunately, the Ede warriors embarrassed him and he has been unhappy since then. Now wait, Fashogbo then reminds Bashorun, come, did you give sacrifice to Eshu as I instructed you before going to that war? Ah, ah, ah. No, I forgot. Oh, that was the reason why you were defeated by the people of Ede. Fashogbo then says, see, that's not all. All my efforts in trying to make this land be at peace has been futile. I've carried out sacrifice over and over, but still nothing. If I kept saying, unless Queen Arulake returns to this land, that is the only way we can appease the Akala bed. Bashorun says, but Arulake is dead. Bashorun says, no. If Arulake is dead, if I would not suggest that we find her. Okay, have you told the king? Baba says, the king refuses to listen to him. Bashorun then says, he will do whatever he can to make sure Queen Arulake is found. By the way, who brought the report that Arulake is dead? Baba says, Adigun. Adigun. Then they brought Adigun to meet Bashorun. Adigun. 
Strong man. Well done. Come here, come here. Hey, I'm happy to see you, eh? Rise. Ah, he says, sir, don't worry, this is my house. You can see it. Then he stops eating and orders people to come and pack the plates. Now, Adego is anxious, a little bit scared even. He doesn't know what is going on. He says, ah, sir, I, I hear you have questions for me about the death of the queen. Mashonu says, ah, ah, Adego, calm down, calm down. Um, I don't have any question. I just want you to clarify something to me and I will be happy if you do. Adegun says, uh, I have said the truth. I found her and when we got to the river, as she was about to cross, I let them wait, 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 wait. I've heard that version before. Mm, is there something else you would like to tell me? Mashonu knows Adegun is hiding something and he wants him to speak. He tries to calm him down. Then he tricks Adegun. He says, he has discussed with the king on how to reward him for all his good work. He should not blame himself for the queen's death. See, you see that food? It's for you. Everything there is prepared for you. Eh? So eat and feel fine. Oh, quickly, Adegun digs in and begins to eat. Bashorun was looking at him suspiciously. Hmm. Then he licked his lower lips. Again, in Yoruba land, if a powerful man lick his lower lips like this before asking you any question. Eh, eh. No matter how hard you try, you won't be able to lie. You must tell the truth because that lip licking is not ordinary. So yes, Basharo licked his lip and then asked, Adegun, now I want you to tell me what truly happened. Quick disclaimer, this recap is for educational purposes only. And Ekulakwa is directed by the great Kunlia for Lion. And this recap is not meant to replace that movie, neither should it stop you from watching the full movie on Netflix. Also, this recap contains heavy spoilers. If you are just joining us, you should definitely subscribe and please turn on the notification icon. Hi, this is Sam. Welcome to the Film Village. Now Mbashoro asked him to tell the truth. He was about to lie, but he couldn't. Before we know it, Basharun brought him to the palace to confess to the truth himself. Your Highness, say, what's wrong? What's wrong? Now, Adegun, tell the king and the chiefs everything you just told me. Adegun could no longer lie. Then he told them the truth. He says, 14 of them were sent to look for Queen Arolake and they searched for days and months, but they couldn't find her. So one day, while he was tired, resting, a snake beat him. He staggered, looking for help, until two men came to his rescue. They took him into their village, and the next thing he knows was someone screaming, Beradi de! As he opens his eyes, he sees Queen Arolake and Saro. Now, because of the help they rendered him, three of them planned for him to return home and lie to the king that she is dead. He, he only lied, he did that to repay their kindness for saving his life. The king got angry. So you lied to me. So the queen is alive. The chief and everyone is surprised to hear that Saro is also alive. They say, but we killed Saro. How come he's alive and powerful? The king then ordered that Adigun should be punished and that all the hunters should be sent out to start searching for Arulake and to bring her back to Oyo. That night, the king was sleeping. He kept dreaming about his lovely wife, Arulake. Then the next morning, we see Awarun, Saro's ex sugar mama, who is now with Pasharun. She brought some bad news to him. She says she lost 100 bags of her cocoa pods. She complained that her business is not going well because of the bandits and the elder soldiers. Pasharun then promised to give her security to her sister. See, come inside, let's do something. No, no, no. Wait, let's do that later tonight, eh? I'll be expecting you. Now, some of the hunters in search of Arulake then enters Ojumo land, the land where Saru was killed. Now the mad piece told them that Saru and Arulake are no longer in this land. He says, although they lived there for a short period and they left, no one knows their whereabouts. So please, help us tell the king that that's all we know. We don't know where Saru and Arulake is. Mm -hmm. Alright, the hunters leave. Basharu says, Your Highness, this is the time for you to take this matter serious, before more chaos and deaths happen in this town. 
the king says you are stupid for saying that eh? are you saying i'm not doing my job properly listen i'm a king you better be careful you that you are advising me okay what effort have you personally made for her to be found eh Bashanu says ah 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 she is your wife it was under your nose that she was uh, knocking someone else Bashoru is not letting the king have any peace at all. He says, you are a husband and you are in the position to find the solution. Then he walks out, he... Some of the chiefs were angry that he walks out on them, on the king. The king then orders that everybody should join in the search and whoever finds Arolake will get a huge reward, big money. Now, our own good are ready for dispatch. The warriors Bashoru sent arrives to protect her. Haha. <laughs> Only nine of you. The armed robbers that attacked us the other day are heavily harmed, and over 30 of them. And they look stronger. <laughs> shut up, shut up your mouth there. Yeah. Our own apologizes on his behalf, but then still asks them, hey, those men are armed robbers and not mere thieves. How will just nine of you challenge them? The warrior says, don't worry about that, ma. We will conquer them. It's okay. Now, that night, Bashoru sits thinking about the news he just heard about Anikulako and the kind of power to resurrect. He says, ah, he will like to be Anikulako. He wants to have that power to resurrect so that people will fear him, including the king. But how will he get that power? He says, I have to find Saro. The next morning, Bashoru gets up and goes straight to meet Adegun in jail. Now he made an arrangement with him and says, since he is a very good bounty hunter, eh? the only one that was able to find Saro and Arolake so far, now he needs his service again. He wants him to go and search for Saro and if he could find Saro, he will set Adegun free. So will you do it? He says, ah, yes sir, I will go. Good. You have two weeks to find him. But if you return empty-handed, your blood will flow. Amaru then tells Bashorun that night that his warriors insulted her earlier. Bashorun says, eh, sorry about that. But if you had moved in as my wife, they all would have known you and none of them would dare disrespect you. Eh, see, is that what you will say? I can't marry you, Amaru says. I already told you the reasons. Bashorun says, you are not too old to marry me. Also, you are the only person that brings me joy since I lost my wife. See, Oga. I can't marry you. Dead in that topic, Awarun says, I can't allow any man to control me. Awarun says, let's just continue enjoying ourselves as we are enjoying ourselves now. Hmm. Awarun, sugar mommy. Well, now we see Arolake still walking about in the forest. Suddenly, she steps on a thorn. Ouch! She begins to cry, limping. This lady has suffered a lot. Then her leg starts bleeding. She is exhausted. So she rests her back on a tree and slowly she falls asleep, only to start dreaming of Saro. The good times of when Saro used to praise her for supporting him and guiding him on what to do. Then she wakes up, only to see some villagers passing that same road. They ask her, What are you doing? She says, No, no, there's nothing wrong. And she's only tired and she decides to rest. The man says, Ah, but why are you traveling alone? Or are you also going to Wewebo town? She says, mm, yes, yes. They ask her to join them. Akin, their younger brother, notices that she's bleeding and decides to help her. He also helps her with her bag. Now on the way, Akin asks of her name and introduces himself. He asks where she is from and she says, um, um, I'm from the neighboring village. Akin says, which neighboring village? But you said you are heading to Wewebo village, eh? So are your parents living in Wewebo? She says, no. I am all by myself. Oh. Then they continue walking. After a while, she asks them to keep going that she can no longer walk. She's tired. She says she has no strength to join them. Then Akin then asks his senior sister to wait, that they should rest and wait for her. For we are? No. See, we are leaving. Oh. She asks Akin to leave. Join them. Go with your family. Eh? Ah, we'll be fine. And if she perish, well, she perish. Akin drops her bag and then joins with people. Now while Arolake was sleeping, in the darkness of the night, one strange looking creature walks up to her. She wakes her up. Hey, human, how did you get here? Hey, 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 hey. 
kwa hala. Who are these? Yeah? All that strange creatures started coming. They started walking close to her. These creatures ask again, What are you doing here? Bam! And then episode 2 ends. Where did Darula Ke just find herself? Who are those creatures? Well, feel free to grab a cup of water now before we continue with episode 3. Thanks for watching episode 2. Please, if you enjoyed this recap, don't forget to like and subscribe. Now, the spirit asks Karolake how she got there. She says, Please, where am I? Where am I? Follow me. Then Karolake gets up and starts following them. They give her a white calabash and threw her through a buffet. It's like a buffet. Ah, wait. Are they showing her hospitality or what? They gave her a lot. Then they gave her one post to hold and asked her to leave. Arulake left. Now the next morning, Ake returns to check up on her. Then he first apologized for leaving her the other day. He says that he had to follow his elder sister. He, he, he can't disobey them. Arulake was just looking around, surprised, like, what is going on? How, how did she get back here? Ake then asked her to get up, get up, and follow him back into town. Now he noticed that Arulake is worried. Then he asked her, Are you okay? She says, Yes, she had a terrible nightmare. Ah, wait, is it real or is it a dream? Then she checks her wrapper and finds that pause that the spirit creature gave her. She is with it. Definitely, this is not a dream. It has to be real. Now they arrive at Akin's house. Akin's sister begins to apologize to Arulake for leaving her behind the other day that it's because the world is dangerous and they can't stay outside late. She says, No problem, ma. Then they feed Arulake, they gave her proper treatment for her leg. Then Arulake asks Akin to please help her thank his sister. Akin says, No problem. You look like someone that really needed our help. And I'm sure very soon, I believe you will tell me what brought you here, right? Akin also promised to help her get a job in the market the next day. Oh, thank you. Then the next day, Akin did as he promised. He takes her out to get something to do. He took her to where they fry Gary. Excuse me, ma, this is my friend. Please help me find something for her to do. The woman says she doesn't look familiar. Akin says she is new here. Then the woman asks, Are you single or married? Akin says she is Akin, Akin, ah, 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 ah. Calm down. Let her answer for herself. Arulake says, I don't have any husband. I can't employ you. Why, ma? She says, All these young men will not let you concentrate. I don't want something that will disturb my business. Also, I need someone that is strong. I don't think you have the strength. Arulake promised that she was going to, she's going to work hard, very, very hard. I can also beg on her behalf. Okay, the woman then allow her to work. Exactly as the woman said, men start disturbing Arulake because of her beauty. They all want to give it a try. One approaches her and Arulake insulted the daylight out of him. Hey, now while they were boasting about who will get Arulake first and who has gotten her already, Akin arrives. And they start arguing and insulting them. Akin tells them they will never find any beautiful woman like that. And if they don't stop running after women, they will never become something in their life. See, Akin is actually here to stay with Arulake at her workplace just to make sure that he is safe and no man disturbs her. Hey, <laughs> Akin the lover boy. Well, one night, Akin and Arulake were discussing. Arulake says she has saved up a little and she would like to rent her own place so she can leave Akin's auntie's house. Akin says, no, see, those men will not let you rest and I can't bear seeing other men disturb you. Ah. Arulake says, eh, do you want me to keep living under your roof? Well, okay, would you rather come live with me then? Eh? Now, after persuading her and Arulake is not getting the point, he says, okay, do whatever you like. Hmm. Later. Arulake enters to check that small post that the spirits gave to her the other night. She is reluctant to open it. She shakes it, she feels something inside. Then she opened the post and guess what? She found money inside. Cowries. I hope you know that's the money they spent back in the olden days. So she brought the money out and pours it on the floor. She dipped her hand into the post again and brought out some more. And then more. And then more. And then, ah, uh, uh, what's going on? Oh, those spirits are Egbere, bush babies. 
Have you heard of that myth that if you see any bush baby and you are able to collect their mats, you will be eternally rich? Yes, Arolake just won the jackpot. She just got herself an unending source of wealth. Arolake has finally made it. Now, without wasting time, she starts house hunting. You know. Arolake bought herself a big house. In fact, she paid double of the money she is supposed to pay for the house. Hacking is like, hey, hey, what is happening? When did Arolake get so rich? Haki, what do you think? Do you like it? Arolake is still asking him. Look, 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 that will be my room. This will be your room. Come, come, let's talk. See, where did you get this money, Arulake? Arulake says, if I tell you, you will not believe me. Akin says, try me. <laughs> okay. Remember the other night in the bush when you came to help me? I told you that I had a dream. So what happened is that... Oh, wait. Arulake then remembers that, hey, she trusted Saro with her secrets back then and he betrayed her. Is she about to make the same mistake again? No, no, no. She froze and then changed the subject. She says, she found the money in the bush. Akin says it's a lie. Rolake says, yeah, I'm not lying. Anyway, Akin had to believe her. Now, Arulake gets so rich that she wears the best necklace imported from Mali. Her maid says, Ma, you look like a queen. Ah, ah. Mm, I, I'm not a queen. I'm only a wealthy woman, that's all. Akin is also glowing in wealth. He came back from traveling to visit her in her chamber. He brought her a gift, a hand fan made from feather. Now, the atmosphere here begins to turn romantic, but Arulake is trying not to let it go too far. Hey, now this too reminds me of Saro. By the way, what's up with Saro? Let's go and check up on that guy. Now, we see Saro wake up to start his business as usual. He goes to fetch his wine. The jars are no longer producing wine. They are totally dried up. Then you remember that, oh, the three years has completed. That is the only reason. So, what do I do? At Arolake's village, some women are beginning to complain and gossip about Arolake's wealth, questioning the source and a philanthropy saying a lot of negative things about her. Now, the three ghosts are already looking for a way to take Saru's key from him. And guess what? Saru's wife is already pregnant. And his time on earth has also elapsed. Hey, so Baba is confused. One day, he calls his wife to talk to her. The wife says she has been noticing and hearing a lot of diabolical things about Saro and how sometimes she sees how he talks to himself. Saro asks her not to worry, that all will be fine. He only have nightmares, that's all. The wife says, well, she's burning up, she needs to bat. Saro says, let me get you water. She says, no, I would like to go to the stream. The water there is cooler and relaxing. Please come with me. Now getting there. She asks Saro to join her in the water. Now Saro enters into the river to join his wife. And while she was pouring water on his head to cool him down, Saro then dipped himself into the river. It obviously shows that Saro feel relieved. For the first time since a long time, Saro feels free. There was nothing disturbing him. Nothing weighing on his mind. Then the wife says, Saro, I intentionally brought you down here. I know those ghosts can't follow you down here. Ghost? No, no, no ghost. Oh. There are no ghosts following me. Wait, how did this woman know about the ghost? She says, she knows Saru is not an ordinary human being. And she knows the ghosts have been helping him all this while. She says she won't let them keep disturbing her husband. Saru says you can't stop them from doing their job. The wife says, she has someone that can help. Oh, this is what Saru has been looking for. A helper. Hmm, okay. Take me there. Now, Arolake's wealth has increased and so is her generosity. Aki then comes to advise her one day to stop this incessant spending as if money grows on trees behind her house. Arolake says, So wait, you want me to stop helping people? Aki says, No, that's not the point. See, as a good friend. He moved closer to Arolake to tell her the truth that the villagers have been gossiping about you, asking where you hail from, who are your people, and where you got your money from. Arolake says, who are those gossiping about me? Akin says, see, see, before this rumor grows further, eh, it's good 
that they pack up and leave this town immediately. See, Arulake, remember your past. I remember the story you told me that your husband was a king and they sent you away and now they are looking for you everywhere. Eh? So please, let's leave. Arulake says she's no longer running from any husband. She's tired of running. See, there's a huge bounty on your head for anyone that found you. Arulake says, ah, but there has to be another way. There has to be another way. She can't keep running. Even that night, she could not sleep. She kept thinking of a solution. Then, she got an idea. She tells her king that she's going to need his help. So, what is the help? Immediately, they hired security men to start guarding her and her house in shifts. She reduced her going out. Even any time she chose to go out, she must have her face covered. Fine. Now, Princess Omowumi and her fiancé Awola are around here playing games and teasing each other. Now, their conversation was going fine when her mother calls her to come have her dinner. At the same time, Awola Aron's father, Bashoru, is also leaving the palace. And unfortunately for this guy, at that very moment, the man sees the princess removing the cap on the head of his own son. Hey! Such disrespect. How can a woman remove your cap from your head? What an insult. Queen Mother also sees this and she immediately knows something is wrong. She quickly calls her daughter away from there. Come, 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 come and eat your food. Please come, come, come and eat your food. When I will around get home, the father lambasted him, eh? calling him a fool. Is she because she's a princess that you allow her to remove cap from your head? What an insult and a shameful thing from you. You don't even respect yourself, young man. Get out of my sight. The mother and daughter also gossiped about Awol Aron's father, how strict he is and how calm his son is. The princess says she loves the son so much. One day, we see her king enters the palace of Oyoile riding on a horse uh -uh, to meet the king. The husband of Arulake, wait, wait, is this man coming to betray Arulake? Oh no, wait, let's hear. Her king says his boss. Lady Ashake sent him to the palace that um, she will be visiting Oyoile and the environs and she will be staying for some time so she needs the king's approval and protection. The king then asked him that, what does your lady Ashake want from me that made her choose to visit Oyo? Akin says, ha, not you know, she just wants your favor sir. The king says, if she wants a favor from me, she would have come by herself and not send anyone. Aki says, ah, no, your highness, my lady is a widow, and since the death of her husband, she decides never to see any man again. In fact, she covers her face now. The king says, ah, is she that beautiful? Aki answers, yes, she is gorgeous. Um, no problem. Tell her that she is welcome. Eh? We appreciate her gift, and we will protect her when she gets here. Hey. Guys, 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 Arulake is coming back to this place where she left. <laughs> what is going to happen? And this king is already asking if she's beautiful and that she's a widow. What if he woos her? Anyway, let's see what's going to happen. So that night, Queen Wojuola questions the king for receiving gifts from a wealthy woman. Why? The king says, ah, she just wants protection now because she wants to visit Oyo and the neighboring town. The queen is just too jealous. She doesn't want one wealthy woman to come and steal her husband. Oh, okay. Please, be careful. I want you to be alert. The king says, don't worry. Eh? May God protect us. She continues, and then the king gets tired and decides to even leave her chamber altogether. They were supposed to, um, 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 but the king doesn't want that anymore. He chooses to leave. Now, back home, Akin tells Arulake that he is worried and scared for his life. Ah, he just went to drop such a huge lie before the king without knowing Arulake's true intentions for the king. Then he asks Arulake, why do you really want to see him? Arulake says, I just want to see the king. Hmm. Akin says, or oh, you just want to sleep with the king, eh? Akin, how is that your business? If anyone sees how jealous you are now, they will think you are my husband. Why can't I be your husband? Am I not good looking? Arulake says, See, she has removed anything that has to do with love from her heart. 
And by the way, she can't even bear a child. Akin says, no, this is not about giving birth. Eh? I love you. Arulake says, it's impossible. Now, the Queen Mother and others search through the gifts Arulake sent, the shiny and dazzling jewelries and all. Queen Wojuola is still jealous. In fact, she calls her child out of that room. See, don't touch any gifts, please. Now, the three of them gather to gossip about it further. Who is this strange woman coming to Oyoile to seduce the king? <laughs> what should we do? Now, an idea comes to their mind that next time Aki comes to deliver gifts to the king, they will send someone to follow him to know where he is coming from. Good. Now, Aki comes and he finished dining with the king. The king even asked him to tell his boss, Lady Ashake, that uh, he is expecting a visit. Eh? Tell her anytime she wishes to come, she is free. Akin says, Okay, your highness. Then Akin leaves. The queen then sends the spy to follow him. Now, as Akin gets home that night, Arulake, with her face covered, comes out to welcome him. The spy has now known the house, but couldn't see the face of the woman greeting Akin. Ah, who is she? Later, we see Arulake arranging her clothes in her chamber when the spy peeps through the window and as she turns to see who it is, who is coming around and then the spy sees her face. No! This is Queen Arulake. Wahala Dom Come. Episode 3 then ends here. What is going to happen next when the spy gets home and tells the king and queen that he has found Arulake? Hey, or will he even get home or will Arulake security capture and kill him on the way? I know you are as excited as I am, so stay tuned as episode 4, 5 and 6 will drop next. Thank you for watching. Please, if you enjoyed this recap, eh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Remember episode 3 ended with a suspense, and that is when the spy sent by Queen Ujola to track Akin down followed him and discovered that the wealthy woman sending gifts to the king of Oyo is actually the runaway Queen Rolake. Let us continue our explanation now with episode 4. By the way, if you are yet to watch the first 3 episodes, kindly head down to Netflix for the full movie or if you want to watch the recap, please click the tag above, it will take you to the first 3 episodes. Now. Let us continue episode 4. The spy saw Arolake, then she shouts and immediately he follows the spy on his horse. He chased him down for a few minutes, caught up with him and then whew, he chops off his head. I told you, I told you this was going to happen. Now we see Awolara, Bashorun's son, making some carvings. A beautiful young lady rests on his bed waiting for him to at least come sleep with her. Awolaran was not even paying attention to the girl. Then his father enters, sees the girl and then signals. Has he touched you? The girl shakes her head that no, he did not. Ah. Then he asks her to leave. Hey, now wow. So this man was setting his son up. Why? Well, Bashano then says to his son, I see that you prefer playing with your dolls than playing with the lap of women. Or is she not pretty enough? He says, she's pretty. Ah. So why don't you sleep with her? Awolaran then tells his father his mind. He says, Father, don't you think I am old enough to choose whom I want to marry by myself? Please let me be. Don't send any girl to me again. The father angrily throws away his table and everything on it. He says, Fool. Stupid fool. Look at you. I asked you to marry the princess so I can be the king's in-law. You went there only to embarrass me. Then he walks out of his chamber. This guy was just looking at his father as if he should, as if he should, ah, anyway. Later, we see Queen Sukomi crying. Do you know why? The young guy sent to spy on Aki and Arulake, the one that was beheaded, is actually a younger brother. So you see how painful his death is for this queen. While crying, Queen Wojuola enters to comfort her, saying, I am equally pained about this death. Queen Sukomi then says, ah. My elder sister entrusted him to me to care for him. Now his blood is on my hands. 
I killed him. Queen Ojuola says, hey, hey, calm down, calm down, be quiet. No one knows we both sent him on such dangerous errand. Please, ah, and don't let anyone hear you. By the way, we will make sure the killer pays for this. Queen Sukomi increases her volume. See, that's easy to say. I am the one bearing the pain. As her voice begins to increase, Queen Wojola quickly covers her mouth with her hand again. Ah, she won't put them both in bigger trouble. Now, we see Latorera, Saro's wife, heavily pregnant as she walks in to help Saro seek help. Guess who she came to meet? Her mother. <laughs> now, guess who Latorera's mother is? No, just guess. Just guess. Guess. Latorera is the daughter of our Warun, Saro's ex-sugar mama. <laughs> Twisted, right? Okay. Trouble is looming. Quick disclaimer. This recap is for educational purposes only. Anikolako is directed by the great Kunle Afolayan, and this recap is not meant to replace that movie, neither should it stop you from watching the full movie on Netflix. Also, this recap contains heavy spoilers. If you are just joining us, you should definitely subscribe and turn on the notification icon. Hi, this is Sam. Welcome to the Film Village. Now, our room welcomes our lovely daughter. Ah, it's been years the last saw, so it's natural for her to be excited. The mother notices she's pregnant. Who? Oh. She says, Mama, that is why I'm here. Uh, hold on, hold on. Come inside and rest before we talk. Now, inside, they serve her chilled water and the mama asks her the big question. La Torera, now talk to me. Who is your husband? When did you marry without my consent? I'm your mother. Hmm. La Torera says, Mother, I'm sorry I didn't inform you. It all happened very fast. Awarun forgives her and says, ah, she's proud of her. Welcome, my dear. Latorera says, my husband is supposed to come along, <laughs> but Saro asks, what? What did you say? Hey, 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 I told you this scene is going to be something, eh? Saro what? Which Saro? Where does he live? Where? Yeah. The mother is confused. Who are his families? The daughter is equally confused. Then says, ah, I, I won't lie to you, mother. I was blinded in love I that I know nothing about him. No one knows him. It was two years ago he just entered into our village. The mother told her that she knew one man named Saro who was an Asha of a weaver. Ah, hope it's not the same person, no. Mother, where is your Saro? He's dead. He was killed in this town. Then the boats come down. That's what that says. Ah, may your Saro rest in peace because my own Saro is alive oh, and we need your help. The mother then says, okay, what do you need? That's what that says. Some evil spirits are after him, so I need your help with herbs he can use to chase them away. Can you help? Awaro says, It's not that easy, and you won't return no many times soon. We have to gather the items for the ritual, prepare everything, and then you can return to your husband. But be careful. You have to use whatever I give you exactly as instructed, okay? Now, Basharun asks Kadigun's parents where he is. Adegun hasn't returned ever since he sent him to find Saro. It's been over a month now. So, where is he? The father says, We don't know. We don't know. Bashoru insists that they must know where Adegun is. The mother says, Ah, you are the one to tell us where you sent him. You sent your goods to bring him with force. So, where did you keep him? In annoyance, Bashoru orders that the three of them should be killed if they can't find Adegun. Now, at Saro's village, we see Latorera's father, Karun, we sell him palm wine since Saro's jar has stopped flowing. Now, he was attending to customers when Adegun the warrior enters the village. The man quickly welcomed him, served him palm wine, and he started gisting. Ah, where are you from? Adegun says, Or you and it's environs. Oh, I've been there. I sold palm wine there. I'm a famous palm wine seller, you know. If not until recent that a strange visitor entered this village and begins to rival me. <laughs> Wait. Those words, strange visitor enters this village, caught Adegun's attention. Karawi says, See, I pray to the god of wealth to help and misfortune befell him. I am sorry, <laughs> but Saro is now. Sa, what? Sa, I didn't hear the name very well. What did you say? He says, Saro. Oh, good. Adegun has finally found Saro. Awaru and Alova Basharun were in the room discussing. Awarun asks if his son is preparing for the wedding. See, Basharun says, That ugly girl you sent to me to entice him the other night did not work. Oh. See, I need another beautiful girl for him. Awarun says, oh, Listen, 
the prettiest among my girls was the one I sent to you. Are you telling me he did not touch her? Pashonu says he did not. And I am worried about my son. I don't know if he is impotent. Awaru says, ah, no, no. I suspect your son, Awola Aron, is not sick. She says, it seems Awola Aron is the type of man that only looks at one woman. Anyway, uh, let, let us have some fun. Awaru says, ah, ah, no, no. Ah, my daughter is around. Though. You can't do anything today, please. Oh, that's true. You have a daughter. Hey, how is she? Awaru says, ah, she's fine. She's married now. Um, to a stranger, and his name is Saro. Ah, Saro. Remember that Basharu is also searching for Saro? Basharu says, Saro. She says, Yes, so I lost it too when I heard that name. We all know Saro is dead, right? Oh, Basharu then disclosed to her that Saro is not dead, though. What? Our room begins to shake. Talk to me. Saro is not what? Basharu then narrates to her what Adigun said about finding Saro. And later letting him go. Ha 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 ha. This woman's life is about to change. Basharun says the king has even ordered everyone to search for Arulake. But while they are searching for Arulake, he is searching for Saru. Why are you after Saru? Basharun says, I need something from him. And look, if your daughter's husband is the same Saru we are looking for, then you have to help me get him. I promise to repay you heavily. <laughs> and nothing will happen to your daughter. Okay, okay. And what do you need me to do? Masharun says, Help me question your daughter more so we can confirm if her husband is the same Saru I need. Now get back to me tonight. Masharun leaves. Hmm. Saru. Hey. Saru keep getting into trouble, eh? Now at Iluaje, Adegu enters Saru's hut and finds him sleeping. He shoots him with a tranquilizer. Ah, ah. Saru gets up and the goon prepares as if then Saru drops like a sack of potato. That night, Awarun could not stop thinking about the whole thing. A sugar boy, Saru, her daughter, and even Bashorun. She was still thinking when a trusted maid asked her, What is the matter, ma? What is getting her worried and sleepless? Awarun says, Ah, there's nothing wrong. You can go to bed. Obviously, there's something wrong. She even remembers when Saru says he would like to marry her. And her response to Saru back then was that he is too young for her. Then Awarun goes into her daughter's room. Hey, oh Latorera, Latorera, my child. The lady gets up. I need to ask you a question. Nothing much, but please tell me the truth. Eh? Your husband, Saru, I need you to describe him to me in full details. Then she begins to describe. Um, he's about 30 years old. Light skinned, tall. Hey, wait, wait. Does he have tribal mark on his left and right cheek? She nods. Awaru then tell her that hey, it appears the man I told you about is the same man you are married to. Mama, but you say your own Saro is dead. Awaru says no, 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 no. She just heard now that he is alive. She then narrates briefly that Saro had issues with the king and the young queen and everything. In fact, he is being haunted presently. Ah, haunted? Why? My child, you have to be very careful. I see disaster looming. After that, says, ah, he is my husband. If anything happens to Saro, I can't leave him alone. Awaro says, listen, Saro and I, you and Saro what? Nothing, nothing, nothing. Awaro could not tell her daughter that she and Saro used to sleep with each other. Hey, confusion. Well, Awaru even insisted that Olato Era will never leave her house again. She can't stay with Saru anymore. She says, ah, I will stay with him. Oh. In fact, I'm leaving right now. Hey, this night? No, you can't. You can't. Uh, okay, okay, okay. You know what? Leave in the morning uh, and I will come to visit you. Awaru is scared of losing her daughter or her baby because of this issue. So she had to succumb. Hey, Awaru is caught in the middle. She even remembers that. She once promised Saru to support and bless his marriage when he finally finds a woman that he truly loves. And now that woman is her own daughter. Interesting. Now at the palace, some maiden were brought before the king. Ah, 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 ah. What, what is this? What is this? What an insult. After weeks of sending you guys out, you couldn't find Queen Arulake and you are bringing me this ugly, 
Now get them out of my sight before I quickly they all get up. Now one of them is fully endowed at the rear end. Eh? So while running, our luggages we are shaking. It caught the eyes of the king. Eh? Eh? Bring, hey, bring this one. This one, yes, bring her, bring her, bring her. Hey. Um, can you spin? Let me see you. She did. God is great. Hey. You know, see, take this one, eh? Take her inside. He continues his gist with the chiefs, and then Akin arrives. Ah. The king then dismisses all the chiefs and asks Akin to come in. Is, is everything okay? Yes. Um, my lady is ready to come visit you, sir. Really? Yes. Ah. But she needs something before coming home. The king says, what? What does she need? Akin says, she says, the only person she wants to speak with is you. Just you alone and no one else, your highness. The king says, ah, no problem. She can come. Bashanu then returns to see Awanu for an update concerning Saru's issue. How far? Awanu says, I was also coming to your place too. Um, the thing is that it's not the same Saru. They only look alike. Hmm. You know, Bashanu senses these things when someone is lying. So he knows that Awanu is lying. Then he said, Can I see your daughter and ask her myself? Remember that this man has charms to make anyone tell him the truth. So he calls Awanu to her very face a liar. If your daughter becomes an obstacle to what I want, I will kill her first. Ah! Ah! No one can stop me. Awaru grabs his garments. Bashoru! Bashoru! See, nothing must happen to my daughter. If you dare, if you dare, leave my daughter alone. Leave my daughter alone. Leave her alone. Okay, let me ask you one more time. Is he the same sorrow? And where is he? Awanu says, what do you want me to say? I don't know where your sorrow is. I don't know. Then Bashuru angrily leaves. Now, Arolake arrives at the palace, all covered up. Then she approaches the king. Now remember, they are to meet alone, right? Now, Arolake fakes her voice to greet the king. God bless you. The king welcomes her in with smiles and everything. Now, Arolake begins to apologize to the king in the same fake voice. He says, ah. You did not offend me. The king is surprised that why is she apologizing? You did not offend me, my child. Okay, you know what? Whatever it is you think you did, I forgive you. Anyway, um, what, what do you need? I have palm wine, English wine, and you say, oh, no, 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 my king. I don't drink alcohol at all. The king says, ah, ah, that's not right, though. How then will I entertain you as my guest? Aulake then says, it will be difficult to eat with all this veil I have on. The king says, ah, of course, you can take it off. You can put it back on after eating. Ah, at least I can also get to see your face. She says, should I remove it? He says, yes, ah, yes. And yes, she did. The king falls backwards, seeing Arulake. As she was about to mention her name, she quickly covers her mouth. And guess what? Queen Sukomi is outside, he's dropping. She heard that the woman visiting is Aro, but she's not sure if it is Arulake. Quickly, she goes to report to order. The king is now very angry, extremely mad. How dare you, Arulake? How dare you approach the palace again? How dare you come before me, the king? Arulake begins to beg. Arulake says, she only ran away from the palace because of the lies the other queen told the king and her. Uh, she knows the king will not hear her own side of the story, so she had to flee. The king says, you are a liar. My daughter, Princess Omowumi, caught you and Saru red and dead. She told me everything. Arulake says, it's a lie. Her mother told her to tell you such lies. The king says, anyway, let's set that aside. Where did you get this wealth? Arulake says, I can't go into such details for now. Eh? Now, while they were gisting, Akin is outside, worried. His mind is not at rest. Now, what is going on inside though? Had they knocking her ah, or what? Arulake says she will tell the king everything, but you have to promise me something. The king says what? I want to return to the palace. Ah, are you mad? You are mad. You that Ifa has requested we take you to the village and make sacrifices to appease Akala. Arulake just wanted the king to forgive her and forget everything, but the king is not even allowing it. Now, impatient Akin decides to leave Arulake with the king. He's no longer comfortable. Ah, he can't stand outside where somebody else is doing his room and begin, begin inside the room. So he walks away, Jari. Later, Arulake arrives to meet Akin. Akin says, 
I hope you have seen what you are looking for with the king. Is that why you left me? Akin replies, Yes. What will I be doing there while you are inside fornicating with the king? Shut up your mouth. The two of them begins to fight. Akin then brings out a pouch of wealth. Say, ah, Akin, where did you get it? He start bringing money from inside, throwing it away, saying, See, give it to him, eh? Give it to him. Give all your wealth to him. Think you can get what you want from him too. You think this is why I'm with you? I know the secrets to your wealth. And if it was what I am after, I would have taken it long ago. Hmm. Akin truly loves Arulake, but she's not seeing it. He even says, when the king is done sleeping with you and satisfying himself, eh, he will eventually send you out to be bearded. The king is only using you. In anger, Arulake says, get out! And Akin leaves. The following morning, Arulake wakes up, calling Akin, before remembering that she angrily sent him out the other night. She quickly approached her guard. Have you seen Akin? Yes, ma. He traveled this morning. To where? He did not say. Okay. Then Queen Sukomi explained everything she heard and saw to Queen Wujola. Queen Wujola says, Are you sure you heard Arulake? She says, ah. She heard Aro, and then the person covered the Queen's mouth. So it may be Arulake. Queen Wujola says, ah. She will go and ask the king. Hmm. All right. Now, Arulake dresses up again as her guard enters. He says, You have a visitor from Oyo. Okay, and um, what about Akin? Has he returned? He says no, and he doesn't think Akin will ever return. Hey, Arulake is already missing Akin. Now the king's messenger brought something from the king to Arulake and said, the king asked me to bring something for him. Then she remembers that while the king was trying to have sex with her during her visit, wait, 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 wait. Oh, so Akin was right. The king actually slept with her. And after the king slept with her, on her way out, Basharun was coming in, and Basharun sensed these things. He suspects the person riding on the horse. Now the king also approached the throne. Basharun says he is traveling, but before he leaves, he wants to make the final arrangements concerning their children's wedding. It is time, and as for the financing, he will undo everything, since the king says he has no money for the wedding, so he will undo it as soon as he returns from his journey. The king says, no problem. Um, I will discuss with her mother, and whatever conclusion we come to, I will inform you, Basharun, when you return. Basharun says, Okay, see you later. Now, as Basharun is leaving, he turns back again to the king. Eh I saw someone while coming in. Is there a new masquerade in town? The king says, uh, What do you mean? Who is your visitor? The king tries to find an excuse to give. He says, um, She is a messenger sent to him. And that's all. Basharun could sense these things, you know? He knows the king is lying. Anyway, we'll see later. Now, we see Latorera, Saru's wife, thinking and crying about everything when Basharu enters the village looking for Saru. He directed him to Saru's house, and there he sees Latorera. Now, she doesn't know the man. Remember, she did not meet him when she came to visit her mother. Now, he is here. She says, What do you want? Where is Saru? Which Saru? I said, we are Isaro. Episode 4 ends. Now, what did the king send to Arulake? Is Akin's anger justified now that we have truly seen that Arulake had sex with the king? And finally, now, will Bashonu kill this innocent young lady, Saro's wife? Remember, he vowed to do so. Well, episode 5 gives some of the answer. But before we continue with episode 5, let me remind you again that. This recap is for educational purposes only. Anikola Kwe is directed by the great Kunlia Folayan. And this recap is not meant to replace that movie, neither should it stop you from watching the full movie on Netflix. Also, this recap contains heavy spoilers. So if you are just joining us, you should definitely subscribe and turn on the notification icon. Hi, this is Sam. Welcome again to the film village. Now, episode 5 picks up from where episode 4 ended. Basharun arriving to see Ola Torera. Where is Saro? The lady is terrified. Everybody is looking for Saro. Please, what did he do to all of you? Now, search everywhere. She calls her mother. Mama! Abaru rushes outside. Basharu! Basharu! Be careful! Be very careful! What did I do to you all? They ask, where is Saro? I don't know where Saro is. You have tipped him off, right? You have asked him to run. Now, I love what Abaru did here. She defended her daughter to the core. Now, with her very, very being, she yelled and threatened Basharun that he cannot do anything to her. Nothing. You shameless man. Basharun has to leave the house. 
he left. Then we see how they go with Saro, all tied up as he takes him through the forest to return home. Now, what is going on? Adegun says, shut up, shut up, let me think. What is going on here? The thing is, Adegun is lost. He says, you know what? I'm going to check around. You sit here. I'm coming. So he leaves. Saro then asks the three ghosts following him to assist him. Why have you abandoned me? Please now, nah, eh? Help me out. The ghost says, So you can now beg, eh? After you and your wife have made plans to do away with us, so you can keep living. Now you want our help. See, we will just watch as he take you away to where you will be killed, and then all of us can just go to heaven together. Saru continues to beg and ask for help when Adegun returns. Eh? Who are you talking to? Oh, oh, you want to shout so the evil spirits that locks around the forest can come and attack us, eh? Now get up, get up and let's go. Now at the palace, the chiefs are meeting with the king concerning the issue they are having with their neighbor, the people of Ede. Now their problem has increased since they embraced foreign religion. Now another chief advised the king that they should be very careful because it's not good to ignite enmity with the people of Ede. They should avoid fighting the people of Ede by all means. Another chief says, see. Let's ignore what Bashorun says about attacking these people, please. Well, we will be the one to lose if we don't. Nah. Now the king then says, Since they've been discussing about this issue, will we keep debating until Ede attacks us first? Now the chief that wants peace says, Perhaps we should invite the prince in Ede, bring Kuranga here and discuss with him. Now, Prince Kuranga of Ede is invited and a big banquet is set before him. Warrior Prince Kuranga. There was a wrestling match in his honor, he was well honored. Now, while watching the fight, Kuranga sees a beautiful lady, Princess Omawumi. He falls in love instantly. Ah, hey, now remember that Omawumi is already engaged to be married to Awolara, Pasharun's son. Now, I hope Kuranga will not collect her in the name of making peace with the land of Oyo. Anyway, let's continue. Now, that night, while the celebration is still going on, Princess Omawumi and Kuranga kept eyeing each other. Hmm, lovey, lovey. The king then began to speak, preaching about the importance of peace. And now that they have spoken and settled, there will be peace. The party resumes again. Then Kuranga says, um, Your Highness, don't be angry with what I'm about to say. Eh? The king says, No problem, no problem. What is it? Kuranga says, It's your daughter. I, I want her. Ah. Voila. Now, at the market, we see Fashogbon passing through when he sees a strange person covered in veil approaching the palace. We know that's Arolake, but he doesn't. So he begins to follow her to know who is this. Then he calls, Arolake! She stops. Baba calls again, Arolake! Then he wakes up. It's a dream or oh, a vision. Now, Bashorun returns to Oyo after searching for Saro. So they greeted him, Welcome, sir. Ah, thank you. Then we hear, Congratulations, so on the preparations. Preparations for what? The marriage now between the princess and Prince Kuranga. Oh, no problem. Fashogbon then quickly meets Bashorun and told him, You have stayed too long on that journey. A lot has gone wrong. Imagine that the king has decided to give his daughter to a stranger, Kuranga. Haven't you heard? Fashorun says, I've heard. And you he will make sure the king regrets this decision. Fashogbon then added, I have also seen Queen Arulakeo. She is around this environ. She is presently under heavy disguise, so no one will recognize her. Really? Then Bashorun recalls that he saw a veiled stranger going into the palace the other day. Could that be Arulake? Ha! Now Awolaran arrives to play game with Omawumi again, like usual. See, I'm busy, I'm busy. It's like this guy doesn't know something huge is coming. Now, Omawumi runs to tell the mother the good news that Kuranga and his family has asked for her hands in marriage and the king has approved it. She's excited. Come, 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 let's go. The mother then sees her whole around, it's dropping. Mother sees Omawumi. The princess couldn't even care less. Hi! A whole around. Hmm. Bashoru then arrives to the palace. What a disrespect, eh, Bashoru? How can you stand up while addressing the king? Hey, hey, you, 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 don't disturb me. <laughs> Baba just shut up before he collects. <laughs> then the king says, Bashorun, I know you must have heard the news, eh? Bashorun says, if it's about the upcoming wedding ceremony, I have, and I am in support of it. I'm not angry. The king says, are you sure? 
Yes, yes, I'm not angry. Uh, aren't you the king? And you've decided, so no problem. The king then apologizes again. I'm sorry. There is nothing else I could do. Ashanu says, no problem. Then he walks out of the palace. Preparation is underway. Princess Omawumi strolls around, examining the items and greeting her mates. Then she visits her mother. Mother says, where have you been? Mama, I'm tired. But how come you easily forget about a wall around your ex so easily? He truly loves you. Eh? You will have to go and talk to him and apologize for hurting him. Princess Omawumi then decides to visit a wall around. Now, while Aaron is in bed thinking about those good times, heavily disappointed when Omo Wumi enters. Awol Aaron, I'm sorry, please forgive me. He says, See, please leave me. Leave me alone. She continues to beg, but hey, this can be painful. Please leave. Leave. Now, let's go back to the servants the king sends to Arolake. He says, The king asked me to bring some wine for him. Tell the king to come here by himself if he is that thirsty. Ah. Okay. The servant leaves. And then he informs the king that Arulake says you should come by yourself, your highness. Ah, ah. What an insult. I should come there. Yes, your highness. Ah. Okay, you can go. As he leaves, Queen Sukomi calls him back for gossip. What's wrong? Eh? Is the king okay? Is he angry? The wise slave did not even disclose anything to the nosy queen. So after some time, one evening, the king actually comes to visit Arolake, and guess what? Basharun follows along to see where he went. As they were in the room, Basharun peeps through that same window. Ah! Finally, Basharun has seen them both. Arolake hears that. He hears a full step. He says, ah, Did you hear that? The king says, No. Come back here, my dear. She says, mm, I hear full step. The king asks her not to worry. He, Baba just wants to do something. The next morning, Fashion officially comes to see Arolake. Now, as Arolake comes out of her room, man, she felt like dissolving. Bashonu asks her to go back inside. Now, inside, Bashonu says, He thought he was dreaming when he saw her the other night. Arolake says, Please, what do you want? Me? Uh, nothing, no. I don't want anything. Um, but come to think of it, the king knows the whole village is looking for you, but he chose to hide you here. Eh? Hmm. There must be something he is secretly benefiting from you. What is it? She says, not to know. The king only knows that she is innocent and the king is making arrangements to bring her back to the palace. So in the meantime, she's just waiting here. Basharun then asks, And how did you become so wealthy? See, the day you will come to beg me with money not to kill you is around the corner. Hey! Now the king calls Kuranga and Basharun to discuss the issue about the marriage. Basharun then suggests that Kuranga and his son should engage in a wrestling match and whoever wins will be the one to marry the princess. Ah ah. The king says he has never heard of such. Basharun insists they need to wrestle it out. Kuranga then asks, is that what you really want? Basharun says, yes. Okay then, tell him to meet me at the arena. Quickly, Basharun gives his son Awola Aron a charm to use when fighting Kuranga. Father, what will happen to him? Basharun says he will die or become an imbecile. Ah, ah, father, I can't do that. The father then threatens him that if he doesn't do it, he will kill Awola Aron by himself. Bam, the fight begins. Princess Omawumi is anxious. The king is worried. Basharun is eager to see. Then, the first round, Kuranga lifts Awola Aron and throws him on the floor. The same happens the second time. He beats Awo out of Awola Aron. This guy begins to bleed and then he looks at his father. <sighs> and then he brings out the charm to blow on. Oh, hey, he throws it away. Why is this guy always embarrassing the father for goodness sake? Oh no, he, he still wants to fight. Okay. So, oh wait, he kicks. Oh, he runs away. I will run Jakpa. Another embarrassment for Basho. Omawumi is now angry with Kuranga for beating Awola around that much. She says she loves Awola around. They have been friends for a long time and the love between them is even, even more than that of siblings. Kuranga says, it's not my fault. Blame the boy's father that instigated the fight. Kuranga then says, okay, I will go and apologize to Awola around. Is that okay? The Namawumi then smiles, my love. Oh, nonsense. That night, we see Awola around's face looking all poppy from the punches and blows, having received the beating of his life. 
Now, Kuranga was also coming to apologize when he overhears the father and then returns without apologizing. Ama Wumi is waiting for Kuranga when she hears someone call her. Princess Ama Wumi, who is that? She comes out of the room only to step over Thunderbolt Charm. Now, this charm means that any man that tries to have sex with her will die instantly. But who could do such a thing? Now, the marriage was done. It was indeed a befitting ceremony for the princess and Kuranga. Now comes the night that Kuranga is to sleep with his wife. They all take off their clothes, <laughs> getting ready for action. Amawumi is already sheepishly excited, her first time ever, right? And Kuranga moves closer to her, lay back, climbs, and suddenly we hear Kuranga has died. Episode 5 ends here. Now, who planted that thunderbolt? Could it be Bashorun? He couldn't have been Bashorun because he was at his house at that time speaking to his son. Perhaps he sent someone. Or oh, what if it is Zaro Lake? Or oh, what if... By the way, what's up with Saro? Where is Saro? Now let's find out if the final episode of season 1 will answer this question. And before we continue this episode 6, let me remind you again that this recap is for educational purposes only. And Nikolakwe is directed by the great Kulia Folayon, and this recap is not meant to replace that movie, neither should it stop you from watching the full movie on Netflix. Also, this recap contains heavy spoilers. If you are just joining us, you should definitely subscribe and turn on the notification icon. Hi, this is Sam. Welcome to the Film Village. Episode 6 begins right where 5 left off. Now, everybody rushes to the room to see Kuranga, gasping for his last breath. The king also rushes in. Now, in Yoruba land, it is forbidden for a king to set his eyes on a dead body. So quickly, the servant blocked the king's view and respectfully asked him to leave. Then the following morning, two maids were gossiping about the event, saying Kuranga has finally died and that that morning, even the princess could not eat. Well, how could she? Ha! Ah, her mother quickly approaches her, asking questions. The princess refused to speak. Did he tell you he was sick? Did anyone else bring you food last night after he left? No response. Then she begins to lay calls on whoever is the cause of this problem. Princess Oma Umi just stayed there. Suddenly she starts screaming, Blood! Blood! She sees Kuranga's spirit bleeding from the eyes. But her mother couldn't see it. Only Princess Oma Umi. Now, the chiefs were discussing the cause of Kuranga's death. It's not hidden to them that the cause of that death could only be Magun, Thunderbolt. Who could do such a thing? Another suggests it could only be the person that is offended by the marriage. Eh, eh that's Bashorun. Bashogbo, say something. Bashogbo says, ah, your highness, I don't know. The king then insulted Bashogbo and says he's a liar. Are you saying you don't know that it is your friend Bashorun that laced my daughter with Magun? If not, why is he not here? Bashogbo says, that is not true, your highness. Then Kuranga's family arrives to the palace to see their man. Ah. How will these chiefs deliver the terrible news to them? Now getting outside, the chiefs lied to the men that the prince is okay and healthy. Ah, may nothing happen to the prince. The man says, they had something happen to the prince last night. The chiefs insisted that nothing is wrong. <laughs> okay then, tell him to come outside and see us right now. The chief says that in their land it is a taboo and it is forbidden for newly married couples to come outside within the first three days after marriage. The man says, okay, no problem, we will wait for three days, hey hey, wahala. Now Fashogbon then tells the chiefs in front of the king that all oh, this problem is befalling them because the king has failed to listen to his words. He once told the king that if I says they should find Darolake and perform some sacrifices and then this chaos can come to an end. But the king refused, despite the fact that the king knows where Arolake is. <gasps> And they've been secretly meeting. <laughs> Baba just cast the king in front of the chiefs. Savage. He did that and leaves immediately. The king was speechless, looking at Fashogbon as he walks away. Then that servant runs in. Your Highness, Your Highness, it's the princess. The princess? Quickly, the king leaves the palace to check on his daughter. The chiefs are like, what is going on? What, what's all this? Now get into the room. Queen Wojuela says, the king should please send for Baba Fashogbon to come and help her daughter. King says, which Fashogbon? Somebody that just blamed me for all the chaos happening in this village. 
The other queen says the king should do all he can to make sure the princess gets better. Now we see Bashorun eating when his guard comes to tell him that he has a visitor. Guess who? It is Adegun bringing Saru just as requested. He removes the mask and Bashorun begins to laugh. <laughs> Here you are. Well done. I'm so happy. Thank you. Ah. Fashogbon arrives to the palace to then check on the queen. Queen mother then talks to Baba Fashogbon. Please, Baba, help us. Your Highness, death is smelling in this room. <gasps> Please, let's take this girl out of this room now. Quick, quick, they carried her out. Now, Bashorun then visits Saru inside the jail. Finally, we meet. And Nikolako, <laughs> I finally found you. I have heard a lot about you. And I would like to see you perform. Saru says, He doesn't have any power to resurrect. Taza! He received a well packaged slap that brought blood out of his mouth. Pasharun searches him and then finds the key tied to his chest. He cuts it. <clears throat> is this not the charm? Saru says, No, this is not the charm. Pasharun then stabs at the gun, killing him, then turns to say, Bring him back. Ah! I can't bring him back. Bring him back. I can't. Basharun then meets with the king to give his own terms. Your Highness, first, I need the witch that has tied you down to be brought here and killed in the village square. Then you must hand your daughter over to my son, Awolaran. Thereafter, as for the late Prince Kuranga, he will rise again. I will wake him up. <gasps> Okay, now I see where this is going. Bashorun actually planned everything well. He laced the princess so as to kill Kuranga. This will force the king to give his daughter to his own son. And then it will force the king to bring Arulake for sacrifice. And then he will use the charm he collects from Saru to resurrect Kuranga back. Chikena, hmm, clever devil. As for Arolake, she quickly starts sharing her wealth so she can jack her, run away from that land. Obashonu's men caught up with her and then arrested her. Now we see Saro telling the three ghosts that what they are doing is not fair. Instead of helping him, they just sit there waiting for him to die. Eh? As he was talking, the men throw Arolake into the cell with him. Saro did not first pay attention to the person. He did not know until he looked at each other and... Saro? Arolake? I thought you were dead. Saru says, what are you doing here? She says, oh, it seems this is the reward for her foolish act. All the rubbish she has done in the past. Saru says, me also. Ha! If only they had listened to warnings, this would not have happened to them. Saru says, he would like to use this opportunity to beg Garola care for forgiveness. Now, the dead and the missing has finally seen face to face. They both begin to cry. Forgive me. Ah, this scene is very touching. Very, very. He then begins to help Arolake untie her hands. Now, Awol Aron comes to visit sick Omawumi, but she was sleeping. He says, okay, he will come back when she's awake. The mother says, to be honest, eh, you are the person I wanted her to marry. Now, Bashoro then brought Saro to see Kuranga's corpse. And then he asked him, tell me, why were you unable to bring Adegun back earlier? Saru says, it's because he has once brought him back, so he can't do it again. Ah, good. Bashon is excited. Um, look at this face. Have you seen him before? Saru says, no. Ah, have you resurrected him before? He says, no. Fine. Now, bring him back. Ah. Saru says he can't. Bashon brings out knife to threaten Saru. Saru begins to beg the ghost to help. Who are you talking to? Who are you talking to? Then the ghost decides to help him. Saro says, I would like to be alone. Basharu says, No, I want to see how you do it so I can also do the same anytime I wish. Then the ghost agrees. Then one of the ghosts enters the body of Kuranga and Saro fakes the call. And yes, Kuranga wakes up. Basharu gets excited. Finally, he has gotten the Anikulapo power. He collects the key from Saru, thinking that is the power. He orders the slave to then take Saru and make sure nobody sees both of you. 
they should pass the back of the village and then he turns to Saru. You must never set foot in this town ever again. He lets Saru go. Kuranga gets up and walks out of the room. His men sees him. Princess Omohumi was also informed and everybody rushed out. As they were calling him, he wasn't responding. We know he is not actually Kuranga, but they don't know. In fact, getting back to Ede, Kuranga did not say any word to anyone. His men kept asking him, what happened? What is wrong? He just went straight into his chamber and laid on his bed. And then the ghost comes out of his body. You get it? The ghost only transported his corpse from Oyo back to the town of Ede. Kuranga was actually dead. Now we see men gossiping about the events when one of them mentioned that people have been saying in the village that Bashorun knows about the death of Kuranga, eh? not knowing that Bashorun's son is listening. Awul Aron then goes to challenge his father. Awul Aron, Awul Aron says, people are saying that you killed Kuranga. The father then says, did they see me kill Kuranga? And by the way, did I not bring him back and by himself he ride on a horse out of Oyo? I'm doing all of this just for you. Stop that! You are doing all of this for yourself. The Kurang guy you brought back, he has died again. Now go and bring him back to life. This guy begins to insult his father, calling him a fraud, a fake powerless man. <gasps> Me? Yes, you! Ha ha ha! Awolaro has summoned the courage to face his father now. Bashorun then approaches Awolake to tell her how amazing it would be for the entire village to witness her beheading. Bashan then says, But I can help you. Oh, really? Yes. I will let you go. If only you tell me the secret to your wealth. I will let you go. Aulake says, No problem. Just take me to my house and I will give you whatever you want. Fine. Bashan then takes her home. Now, I was thinking Akin would have returned to take that pouch of wealth again, but no, it's there. Aulake brought it out and showed Bashorun how it works. <gasps> Interesting. Excited, Bashorun collects it. Uh, now, move. Ah, but you said you will let me go. Let you go where? Come on, get out of this room. So, Aulake actually trusted Bashorun. Hey, <laughs> funny. Now, Aulake returns to his house, enters his room that night, only to meet Princess Omoumi waiting for him seated, waiting for him at their favorite game spot. Omowumi, is this you? Yes. Are you okay? <laughs> I'm very okay. Let's play, please. Hey! Awolaro and Omowumi then begins to stare at each other. Hey, love, love. Hey, but wait. Has the magum been removed from my body? Hey, don't sleep with her, oh. you will die. Oh. Anyway. Ah, thank God, nothing happened. Then the next day, Everybody in the market is talking about the public execution that is coming for Queen Arolake. Fashogbon, the wise man, was listening to all their conversation as he walks by the market. The next morning, Awolaron wakes up to continue with his carvings when his father enters. Awolaron, meet me in the market square. For what? So I can see you murder an innocent woman. No, I'm not interested. Innocent. In fact, I'm not asking you. The father says, I'm commanding you to meet me in the market square. Awolaron says, he's not coming. Here? Okay, we shall see. Bashorun then gathers the townspeople to kill Arolake. Now, after giving his speech of the reason why she should die, he collects a sword to kill her and suddenly, we see the Ede warriors gather. Attack! Yes, they begin to slaughter everyone one after another. They grabbed Bashorun and repeatedly they all stabbed him to death. Let's go to the palace! Then they leave. Bashorun's guard then freed Arolake, but before she leaves, she collects her pouch of wealth from the corpse. Then the other guys arrive at the palace. The king says, Why are you here? Why are you attacking us? Attack you? No, we are not attacking you. If we were to attack you, we would have come in the night when you all are snoring. <laughs> anyway, we are here for our wife. Where is our wife? Ah, they are here to take Omo Wumi away. Fashogbon, but you said if we kill Arolake, all will be clear. What is going on? Fashogbon says, ah, Your Highness, if I never said we should kill Arolake, Bashorun was only doing his own wish. Then we see a flashback of when Fashogbon advised Bashorun that 
If I did not ask us to kill anyone, no. If I only said we should find her, bring her back to the village, and do some sacrifice. Instead, Bashoru insists that Arolake has to die. See? The other guys are not here for the story. They grabbed Omowumi and the king could not say anything. He watched helplessly as his daughter Omowumi is carried away. The messenger then takes the news to Awolaran. Sir, they have killed Bashoru. They killed my father. Ah. Then they threw Arolake into jail once again. She started begging them, please. Let me go, please. They ignored her and they left. Now, gradually, we see her moving backwards. Awola Ron enters with a guest. Guess who? Akin. Akin came to rescue Arola Ke and take her back to her house. He then explained to her that it was when he heard that she had been captured, he quickly rushed down to help. And he met Awola Ron who promised to help him out. Ah, how did you know Awola Ron? Akin says, um, it was during my visit to the king. I met him one time and we played games. Oh, Arolake says, what do I do now? Akin says, we have to sell this house and travel to another far away land. Then days later, we see Saro sit with Arolake talking. She asks him how he found her house. Saro says, he has always been watching her to know where she lives. Anyway, Saro says, he is here to beg her and to inform her that his time on earth is up. He will be leaving soon. Ah. Leaving to where? Saro? Saro is actually here to say his final goodbyes. He asked Karola Ke to please help him out. She promised to help him. Saro, but what is going on? Then Saro says, I have a wife and she has put to bed. Please find her and help me take care of her and protect her for me. Arolake pleads, Saro, please don't go, please don't go. He says goodbye and then gets up, leaving Arolake crying, crying. And then she wakes up. Oh, Saro came to say his goodbyes to her in her dreams, the same way she was given the pouch in her dreams. She quickly gets up to go search for Saro's wife. Akin wants to follow but she insists she has to go alone, that she will be back soon. Now, at the gate of heaven, we see Bashorun leading the ghost and others. Now, Arolake arrives at Saro's house to see Awarun carrying a baby. Ah, they both greet. What are you doing here? Awarun says. <laughs> Latorera is my daughter. Is this a baby? Yes. Can I carry him? Sure. What is his name? Awarun laughs. <laughs> his name is Saro. Ah. Very touching. They named Saro's baby Saro. The three women that has been touched by Saro, by touched, I mean impacted in their lives. So stop thinking something else. Eh? Anyway, the three women touched by Saro then sits and the camera pulls back, then dolly up and away from them. And this is the end of season one of Anikulako, The Rise of the Skepta. Hmm. So what is next? Where is this story leading to? Will Bashorun be allowed through the heavens? In fact, why is Saro not with the three ghosts on their way to heaven? He is dead. Right? And Princess Omowumi, will Awolaran go rescue her? Is he even bold enough to fight those that killed his own powerful father? Well, we shall see. And until season 2 of Anikulako returns, we go plaster wait for here. <laughs> Thanks for watching guys. Please, if you enjoyed this recap, don't forget to like and subscribe. Until then, I am Sam and this is the Film Village.